welcome back to Seasons Ebb and Flow channel. I am Lee Wright. I'm a divorce coach. And today I am very honored to be interviewing Elaine Silver. She is a collaborative lawyer and mediator here in the Central Florida, Orlando area. And she has been practicing family law for a very, very long time. And uh, she is the pre past president of the Florida Academy of Collaborative Professionals. So she's been involved with the collaborative divorce process for a very long time and is a big advocate of it. Uh, if you are curious after the interview, and we'll have this in the description, but her website is silverdivorce.com. So that is where you can find her. And again, it will be in the show notes. So um, welcome. Thank you so much for being here, Elaine. And today, the very first question, because this is something we talked about on our first call together, is how do people choose a lawyer who's a good fit for them and their situation? So what are some things they should be thinking about? So thanks, Lee, so much for this opportunity to talk about peaceful paths to divorce and ones that clients control and ones that are private. Um, so that's a great question. So in finding a lawyer, um, people should be prepared to invest in an initial consult. Mm -hmm. In my practice, in many people, we charge people for time and we spend a good amount of time with them. In my practice, it's at least an hour and a half. Okay. Because people, I know a lot of times, well, do you have a free consult? Well, there are lawyers who offer free consults, but it tends to be 20 minutes and this is my retainer and sign up here. Okay. And I talk to a lot of people who come away from those free consults and I say, well, did you talk about what's likely to happen in your divorce? And they look at me like, no. And I ask, and I talk about, did you talk about the process that you, the process choices for getting through your divorce? And they look at me and it's a no. And I ask, did you talk about um, the potential costs of your divorce? And they look at me and it's a no. So don't, divorce is the biggest economic decision of most people's lives. And you know, we all spend money in different ways. We all choose to spend, you know, have different priorities around money. You know, some people spend more on fancier cars or less fancy cars or vacations, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Don't shy away from investing in your divorce. It is not going to be cheap. It is going to be expensive, but there are more and less expensive and more and less efficient ways of getting it done. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the big picture. Um, you know, there are many good lawyers out there. Uh, you know, I know people like to read Google reviews and Yelp, and there are a million online services. Um, I think personal referrals are often a good way to go. I, I There are now a million Facebook pages out there I'm learning. There's a Facebook page for doctor's wives in Central Florida. There's a face for young doctor's wives in Central Florida. Wow. There's Facebook pages for mental health professionals that I don't think you have to be a mental health pro there, there are Try to get at least some connection to someone that you have some link to yes. you know, about how is this going to go. Um, Sometimes, you know, a lot of people come to me because they Google divorce lawyer in my area. I, 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 you know, I don't know. It's, it's challenging. But when you get there, one, be prepared to spend money and time on a consult. Mm -hmm. If you don't get educated in that first meeting, maybe you're not in the right place, number one. And number two, if you don't feel good about the connection, because there can there are a world of very good lawyers out there. But ultimately, this is going to be somebody that you're going to spend a lot of time, do a lot of hard stuff with. Feel good about that. Mm -hmm. And don't just look for a yes person. Mm -hmm. Don't just look for a lawyer who's going to say, oh, that's what you want. Sure, we can get that for you. Right. That is not helpful. And frankly, I don't think that's what we're trained and educated and ethically supposed to do. Yeah, Absolutely. We're supposed to educate clients about the real world. Mm -hmm. And you should have, like, we can never guarantee what it's going to cost. 
but we should be able to tell some likely range. If you're in a collaborative case and it takes six meetings, this might be the range of cost. Okay. If you're doing mediation without lawyers, and if we're going to spend the typical four to six meetings, this is approximately what you might expect. Mm -hmm. But I can't guarantee that because I don't know. I don't know anything about your spouse. I don't know anything how quickly you guys are going to make decisions. Right. I don't know what the bumps of the road are going to be. Yeah. So that is a wild estimate. I, I, it, I guess in some ways it's like the estimates you get when you want to do a construction co thing on your house, right? Yes. Model, totally. And they and say you want to creep and yeah, prices of dry wood goes up or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Or I don't know what I'm going to find when I punch through that wall. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. And to your point about some, a yes, man, I think that's really, I hadn't even thought about that, but like my ex-husband, I've brought this up before and we're amicable now. And he acknowledges he made a really bad choice with his lawyer because his lawyer's website was like no alimony and, uh, and he didn't educate him. So they went into mediation with absolutely no preparation and he had to stop listening to his lawyer because his lawyer kept saying, we're just going to court because I was standing up for what I believe is was fair. And he, my ex, wanted to avoid court. So he ended up hiring and paying a lot of money to a lawyer who did not have his best interests in mind. And it was partly because probably in the initial he was like, oh, don't worry. Yeah, we can get all of that. Like, oh, this is going to be an open shut case. Um, and it wasn't, and it was an easy case to mediate if we were both rational and had lawyers who were advocating and giving us good information up front. So my other bias is that you want a lawyer who practices collaboratively. Should I launch into that whole conversation right up here up front? Yes, yes. That was my next question. So that's perfect. So the collaborative lawyers, we are a distinct breed. All right. And there is a collaborative process. That's with a capital C. It's not just cooperative. It's not just nice, nice. There's a, there's laws that tell us what collaborative is. Collaborative is a divorce process where both people get a lawyer and the lawyers and the spouses sign a written agreement, which says we are not going to court. And that is so powerful because the reality is that less than 5% of all people go to court right. and that going to court is always the worst case scenario. And there is no winning. It's only everybody loses. And if you're going to be in that 5% that's going to go to court, it's going to be honestly two or three years from now. And it's going to be an enormous amount of money. And I, this is raw for me because I spent this week mediating with folks who've been to court, gotten a final judgment or on appeal and are still battling mm -hmm. three years later. And if the one who wins the appeal wins, what they're winning is a whole new trial. Oh no. Uh, oh no. Uh, right. So, so I say really look for a lawyer who is steeped in collaborative process mm -hmm. because, and you don't have to do a collaborative process, but at least they have been trained to think about Court is not the answer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if a client comes to you and they're like, I'm trying to decide between, I don't know enough. If this is my situation, how do I decide if I could potentially do pro se mediation, which is mediation without attorneys involved, hire a collaborative lawyer or hire a litigation lawyer how do they decide based on their situation, which, which is the best path? Right. It's a great question. I love when clients ask that question, because what I do is I take them through process choices. Okay. And for those of us who are both mediators and lawyers, it can be a little confusing because we can only be one thing to one family. Right. So people say, well, you're a mediation lawyer. No, there's no such thing. I'm either a mediator or a lawyer for one family. Mm -hmm. So, so I welcome through the process. So pro se mediation, use that fancy word, it's Latin. It means representing yourself without any lawyers. 
we, we actually the ways people get divorced can go from a kitchen, you know, the kitchen table, sit down, make your own agreement. If you can't figure out what the whole agreement needs to look like, there are a few people in town, me included, not very many, who will sit with folks without lawyers in mediation. My And this is not a one-shot deal. These decisions are too big. Yeah. My protocol is that I meet in two-hour blocks of time, and I say to people, and so they only have to pay one professional me. I'm not a lawyer for either one of them. Right. As a mediator, I don't make decisions for people. Uh -huh. I'm there to create a safe space to help them make hard decisions, but also I can bring them information that they walk in and do not know. Right. Uh, for example, I'm working with a family now. So they have a nice retirement. They have some other real estate. They walked in assuming that the best model is for one of the spouses to keep the house and keep a little rental apartment. Well, it turns out that what they don't know that I that I can call on my resources to learn is that actually if one keeps the house and the other one keeps the rental apartment, the one who keeps the house will, might have an easier time getting mortgage refinance. So there's just always devil in, and I don't say that to have your listeners absorb that as a, piece of information they need today. Sure. But to say the devil is always in the details and people, you know, people are very skilled and experienced and, and know what they know, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, repairing cars or air conditionings or building things or, or selling, whatever it is, people are teaching or being a nurse or doctor, sure. whatever. People know what they know, but most people have never been divorced before. So yes. they don't know the all of the options. So in pro se mediation, we can I very often can help people in, and I do say three to six meetings, make the decisions they need to make. Now, as the mediator, I can't take the paperwork to court. Okay. So they may still need a lawyer to they you can do it yourselves, but it's complicated. So it's a your time and energy versus your money kind of, but then right. you're just like if you sit at the kitchen table and work it all out yourselves, very often people do that. One of them comes to me as the lawyer because uh -huh. they don't need me as a mediator because they really have figured it they've out. They've mediated already. I, well, they've just figured it out themselves. Yeah. They haven't needed someone else. Yes. And, and so sometimes one of them, one of the spouses will come to me and say, I think we have an agreement. I say, okay, let's walk through it. Well, have you considered, you know, one, two, three, and they say, oh, well, let me go talk to my spouse about that. I say, great. They go talk. They work it out. The one spouse comes back to me. I can write up all the paperwork. And one spouse can have a lawyer. And the other one is free to get one, but doesn't have to. Right. When you're doing that, you would be called a consulting attorney, right? Um, I'm really, I'm just a lawyer. That's okay. really not a consulting lawyer. I'm okay. representing one of the parties to do, to process their uncontested divorce. Gotcha. Okay. And when you are acting as a mediator, you're completely neutral, but because you have a background in being a divorce attorney, if they're coming, they are trying to make a decision that you know as a divorce attorney like will never get signed off by a judge or something an agreement you can kind of like help them understand. yeah well, so um most you know people are always afraid what what will a judge will and won't a judge sign off on mostly a judge will if there is an agreement that appear that so as a mediator my responsibility is to make sure everybody's making educated decisions Right. Okay. So, you know, the extreme case, one person earns $300,000 a year and the other earns zero and they walk in and say no alimony. Right. <laughs> well, how are you going to, you know, yeah. what I can, what I can do as a mediator is share sort of facts that because of my training and education expertise, I, I have access to. Yeah. So I can share, well, what does our, what does our statute say about the parameters for alimony? Mm -hmm. What does right. our laws say about the, the guidelines, the bookends, the, the, the shoulders on the road about 
equitable distribution. What do we do about our, our assets and our liabilities? So yes, I can share that information. Okay. And so if they do mediation, this is my last question on that, you would write up the settlement mm -hmm. for them and then mm -hmm. they hire a separate mm -hmm. attorney mm -hmm. or do it themselves to go mm -hmm. file it in the court. Exactly. And the documents they walk out of mediation with are a mediated marital settlement agreement. Mm -hmm. Fancy word for this is all about our money. Yeah. A parenting plan. We don't use the words custody and visitation anymore in Florida, which is a good thing. Yes. A parenting plan about their kids, if the kids are under 18, and child support guidelines. Mm -hmm. So those three documents they leave mediation with, I will have prepared them together with, you know, I will have written down their agreements. Yes. And, and hope, you know, and, and in mediation, I offer everyone to go, con now here's the consulting lawyer. Mm -hmm. Go talk to a lawyer and go talk to a lawyer early. Don't necessarily wait until we've until we've written it down because the hard part is is what should that agreement say? Yeah. Yes, it's important that I've written the words that match what you intend. Mm -hmm. But you know, how many dollars are going from here to there? Right. Right. Let, and go so if, so if you want to have a lawyer you want to get that education go do it before we talk about who gets what not mm -hmm. after okay wonderful so moving on now back to uh collaborative um like if somebody's looking at lawyers they know nothing and they uh are considered they look at collaborative lawyer and they look at one who doesn't do collaborative what are some things that they should be thinking about to decide? So we're lucky in Central Florida. We have a really strong collaborative law group. Um, there's a website, www.cfl-cfl.com. Central, we could put that in the info, right? I will, Central, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, although we may be changing our name, but okay. So, um, so there are, I don't know, 80 or 90 lawyers in Central Florida, oops, sorry, who are collaboratively trained, which is cool. And, and that doesn't mean that they only do collaborative work, right? but they have this focus on how do we help this family where they are today get to a better future? Mm -hmm. And I know you used the word fair earlier. So in my work, Fair is the F word, sorry. Mm. Um, you know, fair is what we we make a joke. It's what you pay to get on the bus to go right. from there because it's so in the mind of, it, it, you know, what you think is fair is not the same thing. You know, it just, it's not a helpful word. Let me yeah. say, that, all right? Yeah, life isn't um, fair. Just yeah, so. yeah, I, I, <laughs> right. The divorce isn't fair. So many things aren't fair. Right. So it's not a helpful word when we're trying to work this out. Um, but- not, uh, the whole court process is so backwards looking, mm. like the difference between your rear view mirror, little tiny, and your windshield looking to the future, much bigger. Yeah. So, you know, how do I like, <laughs> um, I think I, this is such an interesting conversation for me. You're asking such great questions, but um, when I said you don't, you know, if your lawyer just sits there and nods and says, oh, we can do that. We can do that. We can do that. It's probably not the lawyer you want. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say yeah. there's a reality there and nobody's going to get everything because yeah. there's somebody else in the other room who also has a wish list, you know? Right. Absolutely. So that's number one. Number two, to again, feel caught. Don't, if, if you walk out of that lawyer's office feeling like deer in the headlights, what the hell did they just say? I have no clue. And you don't want to be there. Yeah. If they let you spend the whole hour telling you about the history of your marriage and every bad thing that your spouse did. Right probably not helpful no no is there, is there a balance absolutely but this is not therapy yes exactly so, yeah you're using you're spending a lot of money when you're sitting with the lawyer you want to be efficient focused on the process and the steps and 
you, they need a little background, but they need to be able to be very focused on the legal steps. And you should have a therapist or a divorce coach <laughs> or other people, friends and family to be there to help you vent and Yes, the lawyer, don't spend your money on that with them. Well, on the other hand, this is the first time you've sat in a lawyer's office. This is really scary. I have a big box of Kleenex and I don't get scared when people cry and people cry a lot, men and women. Yeah, I'm sure. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you want to be educated. I'm going to say that again. If mm -hmm. the lawyer is just, don't worry, I'll take care of it, sign here. Mm -hmm. I really don't think that's, I think you want a lawyer, and there are many of us, you know, who are going to say, like the conversation we're having today, you know, mm -hmm. but much more granular. All right. Yes. Well, if, what are your assets and your liabilities? And how much do you earn? And how much does your spouse earn? And how are you, you know, because you know, people always want to call me on the phone and say, well, what's my divorce going to be? Right. And I say, I have no idea. Invest in a meeting with me, mm -hmm. bring in some basic financial information, not right. documents, not tax returns, a 10,000 level view, yes. not in the weeds. And then when I know enough to know, okay, this part looks pretty good. This part's going to be really challenging. You're not going to be as well off as you are together for most people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and sometimes that first meeting we're doing divorce planning. Mm -hmm. I send them away. I say, you know what? Go get your job. Go, go finish your education. Go get your job. Spend the next whatever it takes, three months, six months, a year, cleaning up your debt. Yeah. If if possible. I mean, if they're safe and, you know, they, this doesn't work for everybody. Of course. It works. Because if you've got, you know, one or more, however many incomes you have, you've got more money together when there's only one house than if yeah. you're two. Mm -hmm. And divorces don't fix, you know, if people are up to their eyeballs in debt when they walk into the divorce. Yeah. It's only going to get worse, not better. Exactly. Yeah. I remind people when I'm working with them, like it is hard financially. The first three years, you're both getting your footing, getting everything back settled, figuring everything out, living on a different income and like just be mentally prepared, be financially prepared uh, to make cuts and live in new means and just the reality, unfortunately, of divorce is you're dividing everything you had in half. And it's not easy, but it's worth it if you're not in a very unhealthy marriage to live very bare bones for a while, but rebuild, you know, and but you have to be prepared for that. So, you know, our stuff doesn't make us happy. We know this. Mm -hmm. But also people sometimes say, well, why would I save money if my spouse is going to get half of it? And my answer to that is because half of a dollar is still more than half of zero. Right. Mm -hmm. So true. So true. And I think uh, finding a lawyer who you trust and feel like you, they have your back, but they're going to be honest, like you said, who are going to educate you with the realities is really important. And then um, what about uh, refundable? Like, you know, you ask for a retainer. Uh, what should they yep. expect? Do lawyers generally, if you either don't use all the retainer or you're not happy, what should they expect? So pe different people have different practices. Um, I can only tell you my, my practice is I do ask for a retainer because I want people to, and I ask for a big retainer because okay. that I think is going to have some, it's not going to be a hundred percent of the fees in all probability, but I want them to, un I, I don't want it to be a loss leader. Yeah. I don't want you know, pay me a little bit and then I'll just keep billing it. You know, some people bill monthly, some people do a lot of things, but I, th I, th my, I like to be honest up front with people about what it's going to cost. And I don't want to be anybody's banker. I am not. Yeah. Working right. Chasing. Um, yeah. I work too hard. I, <laughs> I get that. Um, um, so there's that pay attention to the hourly rate, pay attention to what, who's going to work on your file other 
than the person you're sitting and talking to. Mm -hmm. Some lawyers have a whole lot of staff. Some lawyers don't. Yeah. Be, be, who's going to talk to me? How long is it going to take for me to get a phone call with who? Yes. How many layers of a young lawyers, assistants, paralegals going to um, work on my file? How are all those people going to be billed? Yeah, I think. And even some of my clients have issues with like they uh, call to set up a meeting and the lawyer's not available for days. And maybe it takes the paralegal back and forth to even find a time. And they get they meet with me because they're so frustrated at like, I can't even get to time with my lawyer. So I think making sure that you're hiring a lawyer who will be responsive within a fair amount there, but uh, will be able to respond that they will, you will get time with them, not just their paralegal, um, what the billing rates are for their paralegal versus them. Uh, also, like one of my clients could never get the lawyer on the phone. It was always email, but their emails would go back and forth because she would, we would come up with three questions and the email she would get back would only answer two. And so we started, she wanted to just only do phone calls because we thought it would be more effective, but that lawyer didn't like phone calls. So I think figuring out how you work with people best and making sure that that's good with that lawyer maybe some people lawyers don't like phone calls I'm just gonna close this blind so I think thinking through the way you work with people and how you and making sure when you hire that lawyer that that's they are okay with that well in all I mean I, you know clients are somehow afraid to fire lawyers and I you know you know, and, and so that goes back to that refundable retainer business yes right? okay there are, and so but I'm sorry, but, you know, there are lawyers who say this is my retainer and I keep it no matter what. Mm. That is not it's not unethical, but it's not my practice. OK, my practice is I take a retainer. I charge it for the time we spend together. If you fire me, we're done. Mm -hmm. We're done once in a while. If the case goes to conclusion, that will be a minimum fee. That's rare. But actually, people are well served if we do that. Because mm -hmm. they don't want me spending a whole lot of time. They want this done. Yeah. So, but that's rare. Um, but I don't, it, I, the idea, I, the idea of, of totally non-refundable retainers, just there are lawyers who do it, doesn't sit well with me. That's, I can't speak for everybody else, you know. But yeah. I also think that um, if they're, they, so lawyers want to get paid for their time. Mm -hmm. So if my, if a client is calling me every day of the week, you know, and I'm talking to them, I'm going to send them a bill that reflects that. Sure. And that may, you know, impact, um, you know, what, because, because again, not everything, I don't control the speed. However, I will tell you that collaborative process avoids a huge amount of these frustrations. Mm. Shall I tell why? you? Why? Can you explain why that <laughs> yeah. is or how? So remember, so a collaborative divorce is that one where there is at least two lawyers, two clients, and those four people sign an agreement that says we will not go to court. Mm -hmm. And if, and that puts all of, you know, I, I have no, I mean, I have no interest anyway, but you know, they do talk about lawyers who just want to look, going to court is the most expensive process. Yes. So any, you know, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with getting people done with their divorces and in a reasonable, quick fashion and making less in every case. It is fine with me. Um, but that, you know, and it is fine with all collaborative lawyers because our goal really is to get this family through the process. It's still painful, but as painlessly as possible. And, and so, so what we do, yeah, may I? So, and so, so, so if somebody comes to me, I always talk about collaborative divorce as an option. Okay. And then I say, does your spouse have a lawyer? And if they say yes, and I go, oh. I know that person. They do collaborative too. This is great. Or, well, I don't know that person, but I'm going to reach out and see if they're interested in doing this collaboratively. Oh, nice. 
I have a case right now where that's exactly what has happened. Huh. They did the old fashioned, created a petition, filed it in the courthouse, served the other spouse. The other spouse came to, was referred to me, came to me. I did not know this lawyer, but I called them and I said, we're going to do this collaboratively. I'm about to change your life, the lawyer. It's the lawyer's first collaborative case. Nice. So within a month or two, we have built our collaborative team, which is typically a neutral financial person. So those frustrated clients who are spending all that money with paralegals and assistants and young lawyers are probably a lot of that time is in what's called the discovery process where everybody's having to gather information, but it's incredibly inefficient mm. because the wife's lawyer bundles all the wife's information. The husband's lawyer bundles all the other husband's information. A lot of that is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. each spending time in each office putting together a package of financial information a lot of which is duplicative some of just just not necessary yes in collaborative we hire one financial neutral who talks to both of them without the lawyers being involved i don't need a whole big staff because i'm not managing all that paper right i love and that. so right and so and, and then there's one other person, if they're, especially if they're young children, we bring yeah. in a neutral mental health professional, not to do therapy, but to help the parents work out their parenting issues. Right. So the parents will, without, again, without the lawyers in the room, sit down with that parent, with that mental health professional. They're, they're psychologists, they're social workers, they're, all, they're, they're really skilled people and work out their parenting plan. And it's such a different conversation, right? If mom and dad are sitting there talking with one neutral person, no lawyers in the room to work out their parenting plan. Definitely. Absolutely. So people say, isn't it more expensive? I've got all these four professionals. And I say, no, because we're not duplicating effort. Mm, yes. You're not paying two lawyers offices to gather financial information. You're only paying the financial neutral. Mm -hmm. And you're only paying the parenting, the, the mental health professional to build the parenting plan with the clients. You're not paying two lawyers to do that. Right. Right. It makes a lot of sense. So I think a lot of people, when they hear collaborative divorce, they assume that the exes have to be very amicable or, and that they're going to get along all the way through. They're both on the same page. And is that the case? So that's a very typical understanding, right? Well, we, we don't really agree. How can we do a collaborative? Mm -hmm. because, and, and it's not the case. So short answer, when we, when we, we've been doing collaborative divorces now in central Florida for, oh my gosh, 20, 25 years since okay. the movement was kind of founded here. And I was part of that founding. Um, and in the beginning, we, we didn't know what we didn't know. And mm. so more cases sort of fell apart. Mm. I will tell you that we have built skills and abilities to deal with such complexity and so much anger and so much grief and so much mental illness and so many addictions and, right. and even domestic violence and certainly coercive control. Right we have developed skills and tools to handle so much of that stuff mm, you know right. does every case settle 100 percent? no right approaching 90 or 95 percent. yeah wow that's amazing yeah. that's and we can great. bring in the, because people think that courts can fix this mm -hmm. so all of those problematic cases yeah Ultimately, some judge will make a decision that'll be a year or two down the road. Mm -hmm. One will be happy with it. Right. There will be chaos in the mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Judge is deciding your family's future. Like if rather be willing to negotiate and give up even a lot sometimes, you know, and get certain things that are really important to you rather than rolling the dice on a judge's 
random decision based on, you know, a brief time with your family. So, mm -hmm. um, and uh, when, so the two neutrals that are generally involved is a financial neutral and uh, a therapist neutral. Um, but then I'm guessing there might be cases where you need like, uh, what if the one of the spouses owns businesses and you need like someone to investigate to get evaluation of the businesses or um, so we, great question or value real estate or what do we do about the right. value of the house or do they, you know, whatever comp they do they have a pension that we have to think about those complex financial issues. Yeah, it's great question. We always start with our financial neutral okay. and we have that conversation in each case. Okay. The house. Can you guys just agree what it's worth? Do you want to go out and get uh, realtors to give you an approximate? Do you want to pay for an appraiser? Business valuations, same deal. We go through the same analysis. We offer the client's choices. Which way you want to do this? What's it going to cost? How close can you guys come to an agreement? You know, mm -hmm. how much do you want to spend to get there? We have that conversation along the way. But in litigation, if there's a business that needs valuing, they're going to be paying. They're each going to be paying for their own expert. Yes. Double the money. Yes. And then they'll have a war of the experts in the courthouse. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the judge is going to get right. So you're telling me you guys are how much apart and I'm supposed to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, like everything, that those aren't, you know, it's not a, Yes, there's some science behind it, but it's not perfect. There's right. Yeah. And and I'm sure getting the experts to get all the books that I'm sure there's dragging of the feet and like it's I could imagine that that could be a nightmare and take forever and, and so madly expensive. Yes. Um if there's challenges with custody decisions uh, and so they can't come up with a parenting plan, at that point, do they start to bring in like a child specialist, a guardian ad litem? What? So in collaborative, we're, we are starting, if, if they're having issues around parenting and, the, and they can't in that conversation with the neutral mental health professional figure it out. Yeah. We do have all these other tools, which are, you know, option one, option two, option three. We're going to offer it to you guys. You guys decide on your own how we can best help. Mm -hmm. A child specialist, somebody, to, if children are old enough, somebody to interview the kids. Mm -hmm. And not, and, and I say interview, that's a bad word to meet with the children, get an assessment around them. And the thing is that while this is all open and transparent, yeah, there's no transcript. Right. And if we're going to have a trained psychologist or, you know, child therapist, somebody meet with the children, they're going to, they're not going to repeat verbatim what they, you know, we really want to protect the kids, right? Yeah, and what is absolutely. Kid say? I mean, typically every kid says, well, I want to be half with mommy and half with daddy. Mm -hmm. And we never want yeah i mean kids of any age but but we never want children to feel like they're the deciders yeah absolutely. they should not be they still get to be kids exactly yeah and and honestly what our literature tells us is that there is no perfect schedule mm -hmm. what the kids need is for the parents to friggin figure it out and stop absolutely. the conflict in front of the children. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's so unfair to put that on the kids. It really is. Um, so if you want to just give us like someone is considering collaborative, what would they expect? They hire you, the they hire the other lawyer, whether the other lawyer is on board with collaborative or not, like this situation. You just called this new lawyer and said, hey, let's do this collaboratively. What would, what should they expect? What does that typical look like kind of basic process? Once we have the two collaborative lawyers, and, and by the way, just to take a step back, sometimes people will come to me, their spouse hasn't been to a lawyer, and I'll say, here's the conversation you can have with your spouse mm. about why collaborative is better. Yeah. And here's the and here's the website, and you know, we're, we're, te we're teaching and modeling people how to talk to each other, even though 
they're angry as anything at their sure. spouse. Right. Um, yeah. So we're teaching them right to move forward and that arguing is pointless. Just mm -hmm. it's nobody any person. Yeah. So open and transparent, offer information. Once the two lawyers are engaged, each client has a lawyer, collaborative lawyer. Um, the lawyers typically talk about who should we use as neutrals from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes couples who aren't sure what they're doing go to a therapist who is part of the collaborative world and collaboratively mm -hmm. trained or knows about it. And they may hear from their therapist about mm -hmm. collaborative. Mm -hmm. Or we can, I can send, I can't meet the couple together because I'm a lawyer, but I can send the couple to one of our neutral mental health professionals to have a conversation together. Nice. Or I can send the couple to one of our financial neutrals to have the conversation together. Mm. So we get the team together. The financial person starts the, the, the neutral, I hate mental health professional term, yeah. facilitator, quarterback. Mm -hmm. they do. Um, so the couple will meet with the facilitator individually to start building a relationship, tell their story, get some background. The couple will start to meet with the neutral financial person to do that information gathering. Mm -hmm. Within a month or two, we will have a professional team meeting mm -hmm. where the neutrals and the lawyers will, will talk. We bring each other up to speed in a collaborative way. What do we do to move this family through this? Nice. What are our risk factors? Who's got an addiction? Who's got a illness? Who's got a, what are the needs of the children? You know, mm. really dive into this family. Nice. And then we set up a series of meetings, three to five of them, two hour blocks of time for the clients. Okay. Professionals spend a little time before and after to set the stage, define the process. Is this couple going to work better in the room together? Is this the agenda we should follow? Is this couple one that we really have to split out into separate rooms and go back and forth? Right. I once did a collaborative case where we never had a meeting together. And that was an outlier, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like that shuttle mediation concept can even be used in a collaborative situation. Absolutely. And the neutrals are invaluable. Yeah. In that regard, going back and forth and talking to everybody. Okay. Um, so three to five meetings, four to six meetings. I mean, not always, you know, in really complex cases, it can certainly go on longer. Okay. And those meetings are going to be three weeks to a month apart. Okay. And they so, last maybe two hours. So it's two not hours for the client, not maybe two hours, two hours for the client. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, unlike the litigation model where you spend a year wasting time and then you go to an all day mediation marathon and you're expected to make the biggest decisions of your life in a day. I, I know. Yeah. We don't expect we, it's the first meeting is actually, we, so we have a pro, you know, understand people's goals and interests, uh -huh. gather information do we have all the information we need to make good decisions? Mm. Start to build options. Help the family to pick the options that are, aren't are necessarily fair and nobody right. really loses, but are acceptable mm -hmm. to everybody. They can live right. with they and can live with. On. Yes, exactly. And start to rebuild. And I mean, this month I'm on a roll. I've had a couple of very significant cases that we have settled in three meetings. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I feel like I mean, that doesn't always happen that way. That's not a promise. Yes. But <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I think if the two parties, the two exes are acting maturely and respectfully, like it's you not even if they have a team to help them. Hmm. There is yeah. magic. In that team of people who are really expert at what they do mm -hmm. and where the team trusts each other. Yes, yes. You asked me about red flags with lawyers, right? Mm -hmm. You walk into a lawyer's office and they say, well, who's the other lawyer? And you go, Joe Blow. And they go, oh my God, Joe Blow is the worst in the... Don't, don't. You don't yeah. want 
whatever's going on between the lawyers to spill over into your case. Absolutely. But if the lawyer says, oh, Joe Blow, I know Joe, we've worked together. Mm -hmm. Good lawyer, we can get this done for you. Right. They're not colluding. They're not, Mm -hmm. that's what you want. Yes. You want that respectful professional relationship. Absolutely. Yeah, you do want them to be able to work together because otherwise their egos or their past might be playing into this and it's not even all about you and your family. Like that's the last thing you need. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you told me about the acronym PEACE that yes. you tell people. Can you tell us about that acronym? Yes, absolutely. So all of this conversation, I appreciate it. Told you I can talk forever. Has been about process. Mm-hmm. That the, the other part of the conversation is substance. What is it that we have to decide to get divorced? And peace, like give peace a chance, right? Mm-hmm. Is the acronym to work our way through it. So P is for a parenting plan. If you have kids under 18 mm-hmm. and we don't use the words custody and visitation, it's where are the kids going to be when? And the law in Florida since July a year ago, July of 2023 is now that if you have two reasonably capable parents and the kids are safe with both of them and one of them asks for 50 50 it's going to be 50 50 yes and that's not that's a whole nother webinar but it's not a bad thing so that's peace um what's our parenting plan for the kids e is for equitable distribution and that's the fancy word for what are assets what are our liabilities who's going to get what right and the starting point for that in florida is 50 50 of the whole pie mm-hmm. but we got to spend some time figuring out what the pie is and what's in it and what it's worth and so on. Um, P-E-A is alimony, the A word that everybody hates to talk about. Yes. C is child support, which is statutory. And we now actually, since a year ago, we actually have some statutory guidelines about alimony, how much and for how long. Right. People who think they're going to survive on alimony are dreaming. It's mm-hmm. If you're the spouse who needs alimony... Buckle up. It's a ride. Um, But I lump alimony and child support together as future income distribution. Right. How much for how long? Mm -hmm. And it depends. There's no one size fits all. Right. It depends on this family. And the P-E-A-C-E is everything else. Yeah. Life insurance, pets, college, Mm -hmm. anything particular. Braces, all those things. The stuff in the house. The, yes. You know, yeah. So many little things to nip and tuck at the end as well. Absolutely. How are we going to, if we agree we're going to split the braces 50-50, how do we do that? Do we share receipts? Do we have a shared bank account? Like little things like right. that. Right. Yeah. And there are apps for that too. <laughs> yeah, nowadays technology is making a lot of that so much easier. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, this has been great. We've covered a lot and we said we'd shoot for an hour. So I think that uh, this is a lot of information for people to digest. I really appreciate everything you've shared. Um, I'm going to put it in the notes, but if you want to, again, say your website and and maybe if you have any social media sites, people could find you. So I'm Elaine T. Silver. My primary office is in Lake Mary, Florida. I have one in Altamont Springs and one downtown, so people can get to me everywhere. My website is www.silverdivorce.com. Silver, it's my last name. And I've had that website for a long time before, you know, silver gray divorce was a whole thing. Yes. Um, I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn and not a whole lot of other places, but LinkedIn is probably the best place to find me. Okay. Um, And oh, pick up the phone, you know, go to my website. There's a phone number. You can, you can access me through the website or you can just pick up the phone and call the office. And if you get the voicemail, leave a message. We will call you back. I promise. Wonderful. All right. That sounds great. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and I will hopefully see you at our next collaborative meeting. Thank you so much, Lee. And keep up this good work you're doing with clients because the more educated they get from somebody like you as a divorce coach, Mm -hmm. the better this process will be for them because it is hard and people need all the help they can get. So thank you so much for doing this. 
Oh, you're welcome. I really enjoy it. So. Mm. Yeah.